community and just the you know the way the world is and the fact that you know everyone does have an opinion but also a place to put it whether it's just on a facebook post or whatever you know yeah. i actually think that's really valuable a lot of people are like, oh, you shouldn't post your whole life on facebook it's like well <laughs> actually it's pretty pretty valuable to be able to have a platform and have that freedom so in that sense the world's a lot more connected which i think is very positive um you know, the downside is that it, it, it's so divisive that, um, <laughs> you know, people spend half their lives squabbling if they're not... Um, like, well, you know. that's what is kind of worrying. A friend of um, a friend of ours has just been um, playing some gigs over, uh, a while back, was playing some gigs over in Russia, and he came back and he was saying, oh, the people there, they're great, they're just like you and me, you know, um, they don't want any trouble, we don't want any trouble. It's not people like us that I think are the problem, it's the people who are leading us that are the problem <laughs> in, uh, in all of these countries. All of our countries. Exactly. Um, so I, 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 I didn't get to say that I, I love the new track, um, probably probably kind of obvious that I love the new track because, you know, we've got you on the show and I've loved everything you've released so far. So. Uh, but it's, it's uh, top, top quality, very impressed. And uh, the question I was going to ask you, so Bonesy and I had a bit of fun earlier coming up with our own uh, manifest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, just in, I don't know, I just thought, oh, let's just do that. There wasn't anything more, um, uh, more sort of... Um, what's the word um, poignant about it than that really but um, the kind of came up with their own manifestos because we thought well it's a, you know that album Trotsky Walks even the name of it and everything is obviously very politically charged and whilst we don't want to just focus on that uh, it's a good point to start so we come up with our manifestos um, which if you're listening you can look on the blog on our website on newmusicsaturday.com and I post it on there and it's on our Facebook and Twitter and stuff like that um, what would uh, what was your three, four, five point manifesto. Well, bit. I think I agree with a couple of yours straight away. I think Motorhead is the over, uh, overkill uh, new national anthem. Oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> um, Excellent. I, I'd go with that. I could just see the the, um, the football team sing, singing that at Wembley. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. It's the bit where it stops and comes back at the end so the referee... <laughs> like that's and they've got to do the solo as well. Yeah. Um, also, you know, homes for everybody. I mean, you can't argue with that really, can you? Um I yeah, think, we um, both put one serious one in. Actually, that was that was mine, and uh, and um, Bainsey's was equal pay for everyone because there is a, although we we're kind of joking, there is a serious point to it, which is you know there are certain things that should be a basic right, and it's kind of bizarre that they're not right. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, that that would be another one as well. I mean, that would be one that I would definitely in, uh, you know, the pay s- s- structures of the country are completely wrong, aren't they? How can it be that a nurse can work so many hours and still can't afford? Um, you know, to pay the rent on a, a, the home that she lives in, whereas you get um, some um, reality star who goes on swears, farts a lot on telly, and <laughs> be sick, um, is a millionaire. I mean, where is you know, where it's, it's beyond you know, there are words, are there? And I can't find any. Um, it's, <laughs> maybe there aren't, maybe that's the yeah, point. right. <laughs> I could go on about that bit, but a fairer um, distribution of money would be one, definitely. Mm-hmm. What would you have for one, Gala? Um, a fairer distribution of money, yeah. probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I, we don't earn a fortune. Um, oh, we're not rich, but in fact, we're quite poor, but we're happy. Uh, but everyone should be have that chance. There shouldn't be families struggling, even though they're working, to, to feed their family. Um, you know, we do a lot of work with food banks, um, and uh, they're telling us that there are more and more people um, applying for help from food banks. And these are working people, working families who can't feed to, afford to feed their their children and themselves, and the food banks are struggling because they're meeting, they they can't meet the demand, and they're opening up everywhere across the country, um, and the gap's just getting bigger. Um, and uh, you know, in society, we all of us are, are are worth something. You know, a street sweeper. Nobody wants a a, 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 a town that is full of crap. A street sweeper is worth just as much as um, a footballer. I mean, 
in some ways, a doc, you know, a doctor's worth more than a footballer, I would say. A soldier is worth more than a footballer, a fireman. Um, any of these people who perform a public service. Uh, but we seem to have got it all twisted and our role models are wrong. Um, but I'm getting a bit heated now. So. <laughs> okay, no, fair enough, but we're going to use that. Use that. A, a, a funny one. Uh, a nice soft one. We have free ice cream for all children and me. <laughs> well, we're, we're going to use it as a good segue to the next song of your recent album. This one's called In America. Red or Dead, take this. <laughs> Anybody like six best sex pistols? <laughs> <laughs> that was um actually that was written um in originally the first part was written in the eighties in a band that I was in. Oh nice. Um during Ronald Reagan's um tenure as president. Um but obviously um Mr. Trump gave me a perfect opportunity to regurgitate that and readjust it a little bit. So I changed a few of the words, added the shouty bit at the end and inserted a swear word in so <laughs> No man, that um, was really cool. Like, I, I thought, I thought he justified, um, uh, and we we put it on the album. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, it was uh, it's um. No, Rob, that was a great yeah, that was a great tune, man. That like, that really remind me of like old Sex Pistols. Like, like never mind the blogs, like straight off that man. That was awesome. That was a fantastic <laughs> tune. I really dug that one. I really appreciate that song. Right, thank you. Yeah, it was definitely. Um, influenced by those bands in the kind it was a lot closer to that time as well when i wrote it <laughs> <laughs> um well what do you guys have planned next like what's the next few steps for red or dead 
Um, you know, we're just going to carry on doing what we're doing. Um, uh, we're going to. Um, we've got these few gigs coming up. We've got. Um, we're, I don't know if you guys remember Crass, the band, um, the old punk band from yes. the eighties. Um, we're supporting Steve uh, Ignorant from uh, Crass in a in a little while. Um, we are going to be recording possibly a bit of um, <laughs> electric stuff um, shortly. For a, for a new EP, we did record one electric track. I'll have to send that over to you guys actually. Um, see what you think of it. Yes, please. Um, um, but it, you know, it's uh, Gala does a great job on the vocals there. Um, and it, it will, the vocals remind me a little bit of Wendy Williams from the Plastic Plasmatics. Um, uh, but yeah, um, we, we're gonna experiment a little bit. I've got an idea for something, um right off the beaten track for us as well um just to you know um break the mold that we we're in a little bit um but then we're going to come back with this next album which will be um you know perhaps loosely based around environmental issues we've already got a couple of songs um done for that one so uh something like that yeah um yeah to see how it goes is that going to be an album or is that going to be an ep uh, the electric stuff will be an EP, I imagine, and then the environmental stuff um, will be an album. Yeah, um, oh, and there'll be you know, there'll be some you know hopefully hard hitting stuff on there again. Um, but you know that's for others to judge and not us, really. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, I mean, that's that's got you sorted for the next year at least, doesn't it? An EP and a, an album that keep you busy. Yeah, well, like I said, I've got about a thousand songs that I need to regurgitate at some point. <laughs> <laughs> and for the environmental stuff, we could always try hiding his wheelie bin or something um, <laughs> to make him irate enough to come up with some more lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm dump it in yours, yeah. <laughs> fascinated by the the sound like I, I love the the cajon i think that's just so brilliant to have it in you know i've heard a lot of music with cajon but it's it tends to be more um almost trying to get an r&b hip-hop beat out of it against a nice acoustic solely singer songwriter type thing and you guys have gone nah sod that would it punky uh, and i really like that but um how do you record your there's a before i ask that question there's an album i'm sure i've mentioned it on the show before um uh, which is by Hay Greeter and it's like, I don't know if you've heard of them, but it's like an acoustic um, album. And they basically, in the notes of the, in the, notes of the album, it says, oh, well, we, what we wanted to do is record some of our songs as though we were just jamming in the kitchen, because that's kind of how we write them. Um, yeah. And all stuff kind of reminds me of, of that feeling. I love it. It feels really electric and, you know, it feels like I'm at a house party in the kitchen watching you guys play almost, <laughs> which I really like. But how do you record? Where, where do you go and what's the sort of process for, for recording? Well, um, as I said, uh, Dave, who is our bass player, um, he's that's what he does for a living. He he um, mostly he does um, I think dancey stuff and um, electronic rock stuff, right. um, or masters it anyway. Um, and um, he kind of takes charge of the recording. So I'll basically put down uh, a a a track for everyone to um, play along to. Um, they'll get the the, the con and the bass done. Then I'll go and do the vocals and um, guitar again. Um, Gala will do her bit, and then we'll put in the top stuff that we come up with after that. Um, but yeah, it was um, it, it kind of it, it kind of we started out. We had two cajon players at one point, and we thought we'd get a really big um, sort of bangy sound, you know, real thumpy sound. Um, but uh, it, it kind of worked out that you know um, we 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 morphed into what we are now, and, it, and we, we kind of got quite tight together, really. Um, and it's great, you know. One big advantage is that when I was uh, playing with uh, in a rock band, you got amps, you know, PA. Um, I had quite a big amp set. I had two two Fender Twins, um, and. Uh, now I just take an acoustic guitar. It's brilliant, you know. <laughs> uh, when I was in London, I used to live up uh, uh, 
uh, in a in a block of flats and carrying two Fender twins up those stairs. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I can carry one now, but yeah, now it's just one acoustic guitar and. Watch